a stronger fighter for them uh, over their entire career uh, right here in Des Moines uh, than our next speaker, uh, your next governor, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Jack Hatch. We just came off a debate last night with the governor, and it was clear that from what we wanted to talk about, the middle class families, we were able to succeed in getting that dialogue started. It became the centerpiece of last night's debate. You see, like the bus tour, we want to put middle class families first. Because middle class families are the backbone of the Iowa economy. Middle class families were started through the you know, trade union movement. The middle class families are the ones that buy the consumer goods. Middle class families are the ones that send their kids to school. Middle class families are the farmers and the ag specialists. Middle class families are the retailers. Middle class families are the heart and soul of this country and it's the heart and soul of this state. So when we talk about putting middle class families first, we mean that we have to have policies that understand the struggles that middle class families go through. Putting their kids through college, it's a struggle now. Making sure that you have health care that provides for safe, secure, and preventive medicine for your family. It means that we'll have four-year-olds that can go to preschool education so they get an early start in life. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not just a slogan. It is really the heart and soul of what our campaign is about. This governor has done so much for corporations that he can't do enough for them. He gave them a commercial industrial property tax reduction last year. He's thinking about expanding it again. Now he wants to lower the corporate income tax. Not one time yesterday or the past four years did Terry Branstead talk about giving the middle class a property tax reduction or the middle class an income tax reduction. That's what we've been talking about for the past 18 months. And it's time that we understand that how you grow this economy is giving the middle class, the small business owners, the people that walk the streets and get their haircuts and go to the restaurants, take their kids to soccer clubs and soccer games. Those are the middle class and they need a break. We're going to stop giving the corporate executives the break and we're going to pass it on to their workers. So we've called for a middle class tax cut. 93% of Iowans get a reduction in the income tax. We've called for an exemption of all pensions paid in the state so that the middle class, including the seniors, they will get a break. And we're calling for a reduction in the, in the earned income tax credit, or an increase in the earned income tax credit, so low-income families who are struggling to become middle class can get a break. Ladies and gentlemen, this election is about them. This election is about their future. And that is why in the next 20 days, our campaign is going to go out and talk about the middle class, what they need, how we're going to support them, what they can get out of this administration if we're elected, and what the new kind of opportunities they are and they have for their families in the future. Iowa is a place where opportunities are boundless, and I'm going to be a governor in which we will capitalize on that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, our, our next speaker is uh, from an organization uh, that has just done uh, endless work in helping Americans United and all the work that we do uh, fighting for middle class values. Uh, they've been an incredible partner on uh, our minimum wage work uh, and our work on a number of issues uh, and we couldn't be happier and, and, and our work uh, on this bus tour uh, the entire way. So uh, couldn't be happier to have uh, the Secretary Treasurer of the Iowa Federation of Labor, AFL-CIO, uh, Charlie Wishman. Great, thank you very much. So, um, no matter what group you're speaking to, whether it's business or labor or farmers, there's one thing that pretty much everyone can agree on, is that Iowa is in urgent need to invest in our infrastructure. Iowa now ranks second second in the entire nation in the number of structurally deficient bridges.
And whether you're taking your kids to school, or taking grain to market or other products, or maybe you're just on your way to work, Iowans deserve to know that the roads they travel on are safe. According to the American Society of Civil Engineers, the average cost of car repairs due to the bad roads in Iowa cost per motorist about $381 a person. That's something that the middle class just can't afford. Iowa needs candidates who will take this problem seriously because it's a vital part of what makes the middle class what it is today. And whether or not we're talking about the interstate highway system that was put into place by President Eisenhower in the 1950s, or the 114,348 public road miles here in Iowa, we have an important legacy that has been handed to us from previous generations. When our nation has committed to building our infrastructure, whether it's electrifying rural America, hydroelectric dams, or even going back to the Transcontinental Railroad, our nation has changed for the better. And we never stop, and we continue to move forward for future generations, until now. Because now we have a governor who's refused to lead on this issue. In fact, it was so bad that you had the House Transportation Chairman from his own party call him out in the media several times asking, begging for leadership on road repairs and infrastructure for this state. Governor Branstad is missing in action on this issue. And one of the most embarrassing things about the current leadership in the United States House of Representatives has been the failure to pass a meaningful infrastructure bill. It's a failure that's put hundreds of thousands of middle class jobs at risk. We tell our children that they have to compete in the 21st century global economy. And we must do anything we can to help them be successful in education. And that's absolutely correct and it's important and that's why I'm proud to stand with Stacy Apple and Jack Hatch today. But what else are we handing over to them? Are we handing over them to them a nation renewed and revitalized with broadband internet access, good safe roads and bridges, clean water, safe airports, or a 20th century infrastructure that's crumbling around them. To do that, we need leaders. We need leaders that understand what built this middle class and what can do it again. Jack Hatch, Stacy Apple, and Bruce Braley all understand that. They're who Iowa needs right now, and they're who Iowa needs for the future. Thank you. Could not wrap it up any better than that. Thank you so much to everybody for coming out, and uh, we'll hang around for a little while. Uh,